So here's what's happening. Governor Newsom passed a law that says, hey, in a recall, the recall candidate can put his party preference on the ballot. So that way, instead of it saying, should Gavin Newsom be recalled, it says, should Gavin Newsom, a Democrat, be recalled? <laughs> uh -huh. It's marketing. <laughs> it's marketing 101 in a Democratic state. It is very brilliant, that law they passed. But guess what? In the law he signed, he said, you have to make that determination at the beginning of the recall, which was February of 2020, this particular recall. He failed to do that, missed his own deadline, is now suing his own administration, calling it. it unfair, unconstitutional, and unreasonable. You know what's unfair, unconstitutional, mm. and unreasonable? Mm. The, the fact masks that, that you still wear in California? The <laughs> fact that he can raise unlimited amounts of money from anyone, and I can raise $32,400 per person. Recall candidates have campaign contribution limits. Governor Newsom does not. And yet he's saying in his own lawsuit that his own law that he signed into law is unconstitutional because other candidates can pick their party preference later. When people would give me flack about voting libertarian, you're, you're throwing your vote away, you're throwing your vote away. That 5% barrier is everything. If you can get to 5% of the national vote, it unlocks an entire different level of... Uh, uh, funding that you have access to and ballot access. You have to get 5% of the national vote in order to access this the, the funding equality and the, and the... Unpack that. Yeah. So Unpack it. So basically, right, like if, if anybody ever actually really cared yeah. to, this is why Ross Perot was, was so important. When he got 18% of the vote, he, he essentially, he walked Clinton into office. He stole 18% of Bush's vote, right? <laughs> this is, it, he, he did. He, he walked him in. So... What he was able to do then is he had financial and ballot access the next time. That's why they begged him to run again. He was four years older. He didn't care. He just didn't want Bush. He hated Bush. He hated what the Bushes stand for. He actually never really wanted to be president. He wanted to use it for his personal brand. He wanted to get his point across, and he did that. And and remember the 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 three hour late night uh, 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 case studies with the biz doc that oh, uh, that Ross Perot used to do every night. And this is why we need to get off oil. You know what I'm saying? It's he was talking about getting off our oil dependence before, you know, this was 25 Anybody years ago. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, we, the only way to stabilize the Middle East is we get off oil. Yeah, and that's, that was this close to being president of the United States. So the, the idea is if you can get 5% of the national vote, if you get 5%, you have ballot access equality. So you have to be on the ballot for the next election cycle in every state, as opposed to having to petition for ballot access. And also the way the media works is you have uh, equal opportunity laws. So like if, mm. if somebody gives a Democratic candidate X amount of airtime, they have to, you should know this, Tom, by law, give the Republican yeah. candidate the same amount of airtime mm. if they request it. If you get 5% of the ballot access, now the Libertarian candidate or whoever it was can ask for that same amount of equal airtime. So they can can't have a debate and not allow Gary Johnson on the stage. They can't have a debate and not allow Justin Amish on the stage. That 5% is everything. So with Gary Johnson in 2016, they got like 1.8%. And then with uh, the, this clown show that they just had with Joe Jorgensen and Spike Cohen, it went down to like 0.9%. So they, they're going in the wrong direction. But 5% is everything. That 5% gives you a puncher's chance four years from that 5%. Suing over a law that you voted in or that you signed uh -huh. is unbelievable. Any other politician does that, they're getting destroyed. Well, I, then that's exactly why I think we, and we have a legal team working on it, we, uh, we want to sue and make that extremely clear. That's expensive to sue. It's probably going to cost $100,000 to get a temporary restraining order, which you can get out as early as next week, and July 4th weekend, which slows things down, which is probably why Newsom filed his lawsuit when he did, right before July 4th weekend. Uh, but it's, it's all to, uh, to, to bury his own mistakes, his own hypocrisy of his own policies uh, in, 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 uh, in, in other news. And I mean, look, marketing wise, I get it, but it's it's a scam. You know, to here, here's a big question in California. Is, is there a silent majority out there that mm -hmm. has to support Gavin Newsom because he's a Democrat and you got to put the sign on in your front yard because mm -hmm. you are under so much pressure to have those political beliefs? If you live in California, you literally mm -hmm. cannot admit that you're a Republican. It's career suicide. Could these people be stepping up and going and actually getting him out? I fall. hope so. And and that's why that's why I'm running is I believe that this is not a Republican recall. It's a California recall. And Californians need a new, better option. And that's me. By the way, he's me, absolutely Kevin right. the, the numbers are, you know, 
out of the recall votes, I think it's 79% or 80% is Republicans, but 20% are Democrats. So it's not like it's just right. Republicans calling out. You know how he'll always say this is a Republican right recall. Wing. It's not. Yeah. It's actually not. It's people on both sides that are not happy about yeah. it. Yeah, and he's spinning that totally. That's all he's mm-hmm. branding it as, as a right-wing nut job, yeah. like QAnon is going after him or something. Do you, speaking of uh, nut jobs, do you think there are people that are going to look at you sitting at a table with four men in close proximity mm. with no mask on and say, this guy can't lead us? Well, we don't okay. have to wear masks anymore. Uh, in where? For the in next California? Weeks, yeah. uh, even Since in California. The Delta variant It's the takes Delta over. variant. Uh, yeah, yeah. on the 15th, uh, that those requirements went away, so you can actually... Oh, then, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. That's, yeah. On the 15th, you, you masks feel, went away in California. Yeah, for two weeks really? we've been... Do you feel unsafe So, so in the that story came out just a couple of days ago saying you have to wear masks yes. and you got can everybody wearing masks that? again. She's suggesting Chris that we wear masks indoors again. Chris Paul was wearing masks in interviews. Yeah, oh. on Zoom meetings. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.